Hey, my name is Zara and I was asked by Chris to answer some of your questions. So thank you for submitting them and I'm gonna kind of go through them just one by one. Why did I wanna be a lawyer? Hmm, I've always wanted to help people and I felt like the justice system was probably the best way to help people who couldn't help themselves. Um, and a law degree was probably the best way to do that. And I've been able to help so many people. Um, I think that's the main reason I've ever wanted to be a lawyer is just to have an impact on other people's lives, hopefully in a positive way. Um, who's had the biggest influence on who I am today? This is such a cheesy answer, but it's got to be my parents. Um, they were immigrants and worked really hard and showed my brothers and I exactly what it takes to not just survive, but to be the best version of yourselves, um, to use the resources around you. Um, instead of, you know, always wanting more, just see what's around you and make the best of it. And that's what I do today. Um, just seeing what's around me, using it to my best benefit. Um, what did I major in undergrad? I had, was a double major in criminal justice and political science. And though I found political science to be a little dry, um, it was, it was fine, but criminal justice was fantastic. Um, I absolutely loved every minute of it. Um, what would I recommend as a specific law degree major? I would recommend major in math and science. Um, those kind of things really help train your brain uh, into being a problem solver and that's what law is about. It's really trying to dissect things and understand why. Um, you know, a, a legal problem can be solved a certain way, and that's kind of how math and science are. They're very geared towards solutions. Um, so I think those are really good majors, or, or anything that allows you to write. Um, those are really three major concepts that you wouldn't think are necessary in law, but they really are helpful. Um, is there an exit exam for law school? Yes, there is. Um, in addition to all the finals that you have to take in law school, you also have to pass the bar exam, um, which seems kind of redundant because you've just passed law school, so why should you have to take another certification exam? Um, but yes, you do have to take the bar exam, and unfortunately, you have to take a different one for each state. Um, so if you're in the state of Arkansas, you can't necessarily go and practice in California um, unless, you know, they have an agreement where you've worked for five years or six years and then you can get reciprocity. Um, but the general rule is wherever you move, you have to take the bar exam again. Um, there are a few different stipulations that I can't get into just because they're just so convoluted. But um, yes, there's a bar exam that you have to pass and it's not very fun. <laughs> um, what are the best attributes to consider um, when choosing a law school? Um, Location is really important, obviously. Um, if you are family oriented, you want to be close to your family. I am, uh, so I wanted to be close to my family all the time. You also want to see who has the most hands-on experience for you, um, who's going to allow you to have real-world experience instead of just a law school experience. Um, that comes in the form of internships, um, maybe having different programs or that you can actually go learn under a judge or go on Capitol Hill and see how laws are made um, or actually apply the law. So those are the things I would look back and look at just because you really want to come out as polished as possible. Um, what advice to high school students um, would I give if they're interested in law? Again, focus on math, science, anything that really helps you be solution oriented focus on strong writing. Um, you know, you can take pre-law, some high schools offer pre-law courses. Um, go sit in on a few law school classes. A lot of professors allow that. So definitely look into those. Um, be able to be flexible um, and get a really nice community service um, on your on your resume and on your application. Make sure that um, you have you're very well-rounded just like in any other degree that you're seeking out be well-rounded and I think that's what um, law schools are really looking for they want to see who's gonna help make them shine too
Um, how many years does it take to become a lawyer? Um, it depends on the law school you go to. Usually it's three years. Some people can get out in two years. And then if you have a night program, which is what I went to, um, sometimes it can be four years. So I was done in four years. Um, how difficult was it for me to find a job after that? Well, I had a very unique set of circumstances. Um, I had both my kids while I was in law school. So when I graduated, um, I wanted to take a little time to myself um, and focus on the kids and not be studying all the time. Um, and so I didn't look for a job right away. But where I am, it wouldn't have been terribly hard to find a good job just because I knew a lot of people in the community and um, I had worked at a law firm before. Um, so I had, thankfully, those tools in my tool bag that I could reach for if I did need a job. Um, so it hasn't been terribly hard where I've been scrounging around for a job, um, but I I know that in heavily populated areas, especially where there are tons of attorneys, it can be extremely difficult. So again, that's where being well-rounded and having um, other other tools that you can utilize uh, come in very helpful and handy. So you can use your law degree to be a human resources director or um, work at a bank in a trusteeship. You just want to be able to be, you know, helpful to yourself. Um, have I ever second guessed law school? N while I was in it, yeah, I did. <laughs> Just because it was so hard um, and I had to read all the time. Um, but after getting out, no, not once. Um, I think it's been just an amazing, amazing attribute uh, to have. And just the mental boot camp you kind of go through, um, you know, again, going back to being solution oriented, um, you really have to dissect things and think differently. Um, and rationalize things and understand that you have to leave your emotions at the door sometimes but you also have to balance your emotions if you're going to be a judge or you know help your client it's it's a really amazing really fascinating balancing act if you think about law school in that um, in that way where you have to completely separate your emotions from logical like yes I think that's wrong, but that's not what the law says. So regardless of what you think uh, should happen, doesn't necessarily have to happen because you are commanded to follow the law. Um, so because it's really helped me in um, thinking analytically, writing analytically, I've never once second guessed it. Um, has law benefited me as a pastry chef? Um, not in the ins and outs, like decorating a cake or anything, <laughs> uh, but it has helped in reading contracts and um, being a good business-minded person, understanding what my rights are, understanding what somebody else's rights are, and also in a um, contractual relationship, um, trying to price things out. Um, if somebody says they want something, what the process is if they don't pay, what is the cost analysis that the law would put on that what are the damages um, so that kind of stuff comes in really handy obviously um, because it tells you exactly how to think um, who's in the right who's in the wrong um, so in that aspect the laws really helped me um, again going back to dissecting things if you have a problem a law will tell you to break it down uh, look at this aspect find a solution look at this aspect and keep going and that's kind of how problem solving is in the pastry world or in any any field actually um, you find a problem you break it down you try to figure out what is causing the problem what the real root of the issue is um, and it really helps you think clearly so it helps me in that aspect um, is a college degree required for culinary school? Um, not to my knowledge. Um, I haven't been able to research that. Uh, I think each culinary school that you're interested in may have their own separate guidelines. Uh, I know some are very prestigious and they would like you to have some kind of educational background, whereas maybe some other couple it together with the culinary education like some uh, vocational schools do. Um, which culinary school would I choose if I was going to culinary school? Um, 
when I was considering it, I wanted to go to the Culinary Institute of America in New York, um, just because I was born in New York and um, it was going to be kind of taking me home at that time. My brother was living there as well. So again, going back to being close to family, um, that's why I had always selected um, a CIA as where I would have wanted to go. But there are tons. Um, Johnson Wales is great. You know, there are just tons of programs, especially nowadays, that weren't there when I was looking at culinary schools. Um, so just because I wanted the CIA doesn't mean that's the best of the best um, for everyone. Um, what trait would I consider necessary in being successful without schooling? Um, probably being open-minded. Um, the more open-minded you are, um, the more receptive you are to ideas. Um, be able to under, and again, going back to thinking rationally and dissecting stuff. Um, I also dissect myself quite a bit. Um, what are my flaws? Um, what am I not good at? What am I good at? What are my strengths? Um, I look at those kind of things and I'm open-minded enough to kind of, you know, uh, criticize myself um, so I don't have to wait for anybody else to do it because I'm really, really my harshest critic, um, but I'm open to it. I'm not, I don't really get down on myself like, oh, I'm, I'm no good at this or something. It, it again goes back to being a problem solver like oh, okay I'm not good at this what can I do to be better at this um, what can I learn what am I not absorbing what what is the hold up here to be a better whatever you know um, to do this better or to troubleshoot this aspect better um, so I think it all goes back to um, being open-minded and understanding that this is just a journey um, and polish yourself every year, you know, or every month, every week, whatever it takes, just polish yourself, be a better version of yourself. And you've got to be open minded in order to do that. Um, what are my long term goals? Mm -hmm. As far as law goes, um, I don't have any long term goals right now. Uh, I still take a few cases here and there help family members with any problems that they have um, and that keeps me in the loop for legal research thinking critically uh, and being able to um, write coherently as well especially a lot of letters that you have to write motions briefs um, it takes a certain amount of practice to do that so I I don't have any long-term goals but I definitely keep that going in my practice as far as a pastry chef my long-term goals are hopefully to have my own place at some point um, and just kind of grow from there. Something where my kids can learn those same traits and same skills um, that I've been able to teach them at the house about how to frost a cake or how to cook or different culinary aspects. Um, just I like seeing my kids being involved and those are my long-term goals to be able to balance doing what I love with who I love. Um, and what are my final thoughts and wisdom on um, this career path? Um, I think something I mentioned earlier is, you know, being open-minded. And I can't emphasize that enough. You, if you're receptive to what's around you as opposed to um, the the way things have always been, that, you know, you, you, you get, get out of college, you go to law school, you get a job, and then that's it. Um, and for some people, that's fine. That's what they want to do. Uh, and they're completely happy. But I think what you need to understand is happiness is probably the most expensive thing out there. Um, because sometimes people will chase jobs or dreams um, that don't really give them happiness because that's just the foundation or the path that's been set for them. Sometimes you've got to understand you're going to be uncomfortable um, following things that you really want to do. Um, just be open to it. Just understand that things are going to be uncomfortable. Things are going to be hard. Um, don't get discouraged. As long as you're pursuing something that makes you happy, um, it's really important. Um, obviously, financial freedom is extremely important as well with, um, you know, if you're getting out of law school, you're going to have tons of student loans. <laughs> So you want to be able to have a coherent way to pay those. So just figure out what will also give you financial freedom, but couple that with 
what gives you happiness as well. And I think that's just what we're all after, aren't we? Um, finding that perfect balance. Um, I've been lucky enough to have a really great support system um, that has allowed me to do both, uh, which has been great. Uh, but, you know, honestly, it was really hard at first to be a pastry chef. Uh, a lot of people, I can't tell you how many people told me, like, you're you're just going to leave that degree sitting on the table and you're going to bake cakes. And I was like, well, I'm not leaving it sitting on the table. It's still being utilized and it's done its job. It's helped me think a certain way. Um, so it's, you know, even though it was an expensive thing to do, it was wonderful and it's an experience. So I would just say, don't get discouraged. Don't worry about what people are saying. Be mindful of what your loved ones are telling you. But at the end of the day it's about you and pursuing something that makes you happy and something that you can use to help lead by example too and I'm I'm extremely lucky that I've been able to do all those things anyways thank you so much for submitting your questions it was really fun to answer them um, and please reach out to me if I can ever be of any help to you guys thank you so much